video, I'm going to show you how you can determine the mass percent of a hydrogen peroxide solution that is given to you using redox titration. So as you can see here, all what I have is a solution of hydrogen peroxide that it says a null. Now how can we do this? Let's go to discuss the balancing the redox reaction and the stoichiometric calculation that we will need to carry. Then we will come back here and I will show you the details on the experimental procedure. Okay, so if the objective of this experiment is to determine the mass percent of hydrogen peroxide in the given solution, what am I going to look for? Now to determine the mass percent of hydrogen peroxide in the solution, I will need to find the mass of hydrogen peroxide in the solution divided by the mass of the solution. Since mainly uh, hydrogen peroxide and sulfuric acid are in water solution, so I will consider that the volume of the solution is equal to the volume of water. And by using the density of water equal to one gram per milliliter, so I can find the mass of the solution. So for now, I will just say the mass of the solution multiplied by 100%. Now the question is, how can I find the mass of H2O2 in the solution? If I can find the number of mole of H2O2 in the solution, I can just simply say that the number of mole is equal to mass over molar mass. And therefore, mass of H2O2 is going to be equal to the number of mole multiplied by the molar mass. So the question now is how can I determine the number of mole? And that's why I'm using titration, because titration will allow me to determine the number of mole of a solution that has an unknown concentration. Okay, so now to determine the number of mole of hydrogen peroxide, I will need first to write the reaction that's happening between the permanganate and the hydrogen peroxide. So now we have the permanganate, MnO4 minus, reacting with the hydrogen peroxide in the presence of acid. Now, this is a redox reaction. So, the oxidizing agent, the permanganate, is going to get reduced into manganese 2 plus, and the reducing agent, which is here, the hydrogen peroxide, is getting to get oxidized into O2. Now, when I'm given a reaction like this, how can I balance it? Now for the details on balancing a redox reaction, I have already posted a video on this, so you can find the link to this video in the description below. Now I will be quick on balancing the redox reaction, so I will first split it into two half equations. So I will just say MnO4 will give Mn2 plus and the H2O2 will give O2. Now to balance the first one, 1mn, 1mn, so I'm good. Here I have 4 oxygen, so here I will have to add 4 H2O. Now that I have 8 hydrogen here, so I will have to add 8 H plus in here. Now I look at the charges, here I have 1 minus and, and 8 plus, so the total of 7 plus. The total here is 2 plus, so I need to make the 7 plus equal to 2 plus, and I will add five electrons. Now for H2O2, uh, I start with oxygen since I have no other elements than a hydrogen and oxygen. So oxygen is balanced. Now I need to balance hydrogen. Here I have H2. So I will be adding two H plus in here. Now to balance the charge, here I have zero. And here I have two plus. So I will be adding two electrons. Okay. So now I will need to sum these two half equations, 
But before that, I need to cancel the number of electrons. Here I have five, here I have two. So I will be multiplying this half equation by two and this half equation by five. So like this, I will be able to cancel the electrons. Now, the sum is going to be the overall equation. So MnO4 minus plus five H2O2 plus. Now for the H plus, I'm going to have 16 H plus here and 10 H plus to the right. So I will have to cancel the 10 H plus to the right and here I will have six H plus remaining in the reactant side. Now two Mn2 plus plus 5O2 and since I don't have water to the reactant side, all 2 times 4 water will give me 8H2O. So like this, I can balance the equation between the permanganate and hydrogen peroxide. So now I need to find the number of mole of hydrogen peroxide. Okay, so now to find the number of mole, I have my reaction again and I can simply say that 1 over 2, which is the coefficient, number of mole of MnO4 minus is equal to 1 over 5, number of mole of H2O2. You can either use the short method to determine the number of mole, or you can use the dimensional analysis and use the mole ratio. It's up to you. So now, the number of mole of H2O2 is equal to 5 divided by 2 number of mole of MnO4 minus. Now this is going to be equal to 5 over 2 instead of number of mole now I can say Cm times V. So that's equal to 5 over 2. I have the molarity that's given that's on the bottle and the V is the V average. Now what's the V average of the titration? I have done titer 1 and titer 2. So I got V1 and V2 because I have repeated my titration twice. Now I exclude the rough titration volume because this is just rough, it's not an accurate. Now for the volume that I want to use in here I can just say the volume average is equal to V1 plus V2 over 2. So plug in the molarity and the volume in their values, I can determine the number of mole of H2O2. Now that I have determined the number of mole of H2O2, I can determine the mass of H2O2. When I determine the mass of H2O2, I divide it by the mass of the solution, multiplied by 100%. I will find the mass percent of H2O2 in the solution. So let's go back now and let me show you the details of the experimental procedure. Great! So now that we have discussed the stoichiometric calculations, we will need to carry on the experiment now to find the missing data. So I will start first by setting up the experiment. <laughs> Okay, so now like any titration, I need to start first with a rough titration so I can know how much of potassium permanganate I will need to use. But now there is something very important. I don't know the mass percent of this solution and also I don't know the concentration of this solution. If it turns out that this solution is too concentrated, uh, probably the entire volume of the potassium permanganate filled in this burette will not be enough. So that's why I will need to carry some uh, experiments to check whether the uh, dilution factor that I'm going to use is going to be enough to use it an acceptable amount of KMnO4 or not. Now for me, 
I know my dilution factor, I know the amounts that I'm going to add, but now for you guys, I will leave this to you. Now remember that in your LMI, you are going to prepare the solution of hydrogen peroxide. You will need to add to it water to dilute it, but also you will need to add to it the sulfuric acid, okay? So I will be preparing my solution and show you the titration. Okay, so now I have my solution. I will add the magnetic bar. And now I have, I will establish good stirring because it's very important. And now I'm ready to start my titration. So the rough titration, I will be starting by adding one by one until that the color here changes. So here you go. For me, after adding 11 milliliter, the color has changed. But this is for my dilution factor. For your dilution factor, guys, it might take less, it might take more. So now that I know that I will consume around 11 milliliter, so I can start my titration for accurate volumes. Okay, so now I have my solution and I'm ready to start the accurate titration this time. Now for accurate titration, if I know that roughly I will consume up to 11 milliliter of potassium permanganate, I can add up to 9 and then add the remaining amount drop by drop so I can have an accurate volume. So now I'll start my titration again and now I'll be adding 9 milliliter at once so you can see that it's, uh, the color is not changing. So once it becomes nine, okay, so I stop now and the color does not change yet. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add dropwise As you can see, the color is changing quickly. And now once the color doesn't change, I will stop the titration or the addition of potassium permanganate. There you go. So now my color changed. It means that I added I have added enough of potassium permanganate and I have consumed around 10.3. I repeat one more time, this is 10.3 for my dilution factor. So you will need to repeat this one more time and take the average volume to carry on with the calculation as we have seen in uh, the previous part. I hope this video is helpful to you. I'll see you next time.